Welcome all to this short webinar. My name is Jari Salo. I'm an orthopedic surgeon with major interest in, in cardiac surgery. I also have a background in bone cell biology and uh, developing new technologies. Uh, it's my pleasure now to share my initial experience um, with CBCT scanner in my practice. I have been using it now for two years in my own office. And I will now give you some examples how it can be used in, in, in orthopedist's office. So the machine itself, it's a versatile machine, small machine, which is ambulatory. And you can have uh, the basic imaging with 0.4 millimeter resolution, which is an isotropic resolution. So it's, it's the same in all three directions. If you need more detailed imaging, so you have a 0.2 millimeter built-in high-res uh, option there, so that's available already. Um, we can also have the weight-bearing imaging. So here's an example of alignment of the calcaneus and talus, and uh, we can also have imaging in, in special questions, like in the second example where we have a ballet dancer with the with an old sesamoid fracture and a painful non-union there. We can also stress the foot and ankle area in other directions, but uh, then we come to the problem that what is normal, like in, in, in the next example here, so you can see that there is a huge movement of the Chopard area, for example, but is that normal or what has happened remains to be seen. The multiplanar reconstruction is, is, is the friend of uh, this isotropic data, and uh, I hope that I will give you an idea of what is this multiplanar reconstruction in clinical practice. So it means that you take the original imaging data, no matter whether it's uh, slice-based CT data um, or MRI data, but uh, you put it in a software and you rotate it afterwards, and you, you will get new uh, view of angle there, and, and uh, you can utilize it with best with isotropic data so that you have the same resolution in any direction in your original data. And the Verity CPCT scanner offers, offers this kind of data, so, so you can go through that afterwards in any direction with any slice thickness you decide. So M MPR can be used with traditional data also, but uh, then we can have some issues like, like I will show you later on. So here we have two examples, so two data sets with initially same resolution in X and Y direction, but when we rotate them, so we can see that on the left side we have thick slices and on the right side we have isotropic voxels. And when we add these to cover the region of interest, so you, you will see that we have the full resolution with isotropic data or we have these slices on the left side. Uh, here's an example of uh, one millimeter times one millimeter times three millimeters on the left side. So that represents the, the routine MRI in many clinics. And then we have that um, fine data there, which is um, isotropic voxels with 0.2 millimeter resolution. So the spatial resolution and the difference in, in the spatial resolution is, is remarkable. When we now try to reconstruct, for example, a small joint facet like here, the sphere, so, so you can imagine what is the difference there if you have these small isotropic voxels or the slice-based thick data. So in the next one, we'll see a femoral condyle, and you can imagine whether you reconstruct it with small voxels with isotropic resolution, like in, 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 the, in the bottom area, or with those slice-based data uh, at the top. So what is the typical slice data then? We are all familiar with the MRI slices, like here in, in, in this example. So we have a knee, we have sagittal MRI uh, slice series, and we can see that for sure there are problems in the tibia area. So the proximal tibia, there are fracture lines, there is edema, and we, we are very familiar with scrolling through all these data sets in three different directions. Why are we using it in three different directions? Is because we have the original data with three millimeter thickness in, in, in third direction. So if we now rotate in the MPR, MPR view, the sagittal views, the coronal view, 
So then we see the real resolution in third direction and we cannot be very satisfied with that. So that is the reason why we have sagittal coronal axial slice series with, uh, with, with a typical slice date. So we can overcome this problem with isotropic data. So here we have the original uh, one data set which can be viewed here in the, in the sagittal view and the same data set can be used for coronal axial or free view of angle. So you can also determine what is the slice thickness there. Here we have a plain X-ray which suggests that there is a, a problem on the Lisbrank area, a Lisbrank injury. And if, if we now have a CBCT data of the same foot, so we can pick up first a 60 millimeter slice thickness. So it means that now the region of interest is 60 millimeters thick and we rotate that data set in, on, on the screen and we can scroll it here. So we first rotate it, uh, then we wrote, then we scroll through it to the posterior uh, direction and now we come to the, to the Lisbrank area and when we are interested in more detailed imaging so we can change the slice thickness here from 60 millimeters to let's say three millimeters. And now, now we can zoom a little bit here so, so that we can see those fracture lines and fracture pieces on the, on the plantar side. And, and you can see that there are fractures actually in four metatarsal bones. And um, you can even pick up all these bones individually so that, so that you can have like five different views to show the situation of all these individual bones like here. So how can you do this in your own office? So every hospital has a, a software for viewing these DACOM data. And here we have an example with the Gearstream uh, software. You can use ACFA, you can use whatever you have. But the basic idea is that uh, you are free to select those uh, directions of view and slice thickness. So the most uh, convenient way to start with this isotropic data is that you use these traditional sagittal, coronal and axial slices. So then you can scroll through and you can feel safe because this is what we have done for, for years. When you get more experienced, you can uh, have a different view of angle and, and you can scroll through the data in your, in your own way. Here we can see those fracture lines and, and um, with this resolution you can even see those penetration of vessels through the, through the cortex. If, if we now change the thickness to let's say 80 millimeters so then we can have the whole knee and we can rotate it freely. So it only depends on what you are interested in in each case. Okay, now we have the part two of this uh, webinar, so, so the contrast enhancement. And the basic idea here is that we use uh, contrast agent to, to show us the, the cartilates. And we have been developing this in Finland with, with lots of collaboration with, with physicists and, and, and medical experts and technical side. So here's a patient example with lateral malar fracture and non-union on that area after eight months of initial trauma, and we put the conscious media into the DC joint, and then we invert the images like here. And now we have the contrast media as a black one or dark one, and then we have the cartilage as a, as a white layer there, and then the bone is now dark. So here, here you can see the cartilage layers, which are only like one millimeter in, in the DC joint. And you can see also the subchondral bone area here with, with no remarkable reactions there on that side. Then we can see also these cartilage lesions. And on the medial side, there is also subchondral bone reaction under the, the cartilage flap. So we, we can continue now um, to the posterior direction and we scroll through the data set and we can see the lateral malar fracture there. So it, evidently it's, it's a non-union there with a small bone piece between those major fracture parts. 
Then we can have this sagittal imaging, and now we can see that the correlates flap on the talus quite clearly, like um, here. So there is a flap-like tear of the correlates with, with subcoronal bone reaction under it, and on the lateral side, the correlate seems to be intact, but then we come to the uh, to the fracture area itself, and we can see that non-union area there. But what is the real power of isotropic voxels combined to this MPR is a perpendicular view of joint facets. So, so here we have the TC joint, and we can recalculate afterwards a perpendicular view of TC joint correlates. So here we have an example. So we scroll through the TC joint along that curved line we have drawn there, and then we can measure exactly what is the thickness of the correlates in TC joint area. As an example, we can do this also to the fracture area, so we can see whether there is a non-union or not. In this, uh, in this case, it doesn't make very much sense because it's so evident that there is, there is a non-union, but, but in other cases, you can also use that option. And so they are all built in. You only need the original uh, isotropic data cloud to go through. You can also see the scar formation inside the joint. So here is the situation after posterior DC joint arthroscopy and scar formation on that area inside the joint. So arthrofibrosis, for example, can be diagnosed with contrast media enhancement. This kind of flap-like uh, correlates ruptures, like in this athlete, uh, are quite difficult when you have the knee in extension, in full extension. And for example, MRI imaging, because the spatial resolution is limited and they are compressed uh, compressed to the bone, so they cannot be seen very easily. But with conical beam CT and contrast media, it's quite easy to find those. You can also have these meniscus ruptures, like here in this example, in axial view, so you get the morphology of meniscus ruptures before you go inside the knee, so you can plan how you fix these kind of problems. So the initial resolution matters, so, so we just get the great spatial resolution and then we can pick up different tissues. Like in this example, we can get the knee endoprosthesis out of the, out of the data and then we can have the bone. And as we saw earlier, we can have cartilage and we can have meniscus tissue. In all these cases, the most important thing is the high quality original isotropic data. Here are some examples of published papers. So, so our first paper with contrast enhancement was this um, hand surgery work where we had those conical beam CT scanners compared to MRA. And uh, then we have also this kind of uh, delayed imaging done so, so that we can follow up the penetration of contrast media into the cartilates to see what is the internal quality of cartilates. So I hope I gave you the initial idea of what can be done with the CPCT scanner, like Verity scanner and uh, contrast enhancement and native imaging. And if you have any further questions, so please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you.